okay so let's start with the topic of motivation uh, if anyone have difficulty in listening or any questions during lecture you can ask in chat option okay so among the section c we have covered so far the topic of uh, learning the classical conditioning the operant conditioning and uh, the topic of uh, uh, okay so the purpose of adding uh, this section c in the behavioral sciences is that uh, the topics which you have learned about the ethics the topic which you have learned about the communication in your section a in your section b uh, so by studying these psychological factors you guys will got an insight about the psychological processes so uh, today we will start with the topic of the motivation so let's first relate the importance of motivation for the dental students as the importance of everything is very important because if you guys have no idea why we are studying then obviously you uh, okay so motivation is basically that force that pushes us towards a goal that pushes us towards something towards a task towards an external stimulus you can uh, you can learn the motivation you can assume the motivation as a core psychological process a, a, a cognitive process which is a result of our response towards some environmental stimulus the response which which our mind which are, uh, which we generate towards some external stimulus for example in the future you will have to see the patients you have to book the appointment for the patient while if you book the appointment for the 10 patients or the 15 patient to advise a root canal the scaling procedures for the 10 or 20 patients then among the 20 only one two five or maybe 10 will show up okay so to know this core difference that why uh, why not every individual responds in the same way towards the stimulus the process of motivation to understand this motivation is very important in the same way uh, you guys uh, took a lot of effort you guys are doing a lot of effort you are totally ignoring this bs thing why because there is a difference in the motivation levels let's see why some individuals are responding towards more responding towards the stimulus whereas others are relaxing or the others didn't bother to respond towards a stimulus so today you will learn what is motivation what are its different types what is the maslow's theory for the maslow's hierarchy of needs and how you will apply in your clinical settings or in your hospital settings in future so as you can see on your screens i put an image so let's concentrate on it uh, okay वीडियो यार बंद कर दूं हां ठीक है अब देखो स्क्रीन आ रही ओके कैन यू गाइस नो सी दिस दिस प्रेजेंटेशन इफ यस देन प्लीज टाइप इन द मैसेज ओके गुड गुड एनफ ओके सो नाउ कंसंट्रेट ऑन दिस इमेज no one can motivate you until you motivate yourself reason being reason being is that motivation is something which generates inside uh, inside someone's brain inside someone's mind motivation is derived from our wishes motivation is derived from our brought up motivation is derived from our instincts okay so motivation is purely a thing purely a response to of an individual towards a environmental stimulus let's see how it's a response how i'm relating it to uh, towards the basic cognitive processes so first define this thing motivation motivation is basically the driving force which results in persistent behavior 
which is directed towards a particular goal. Now, concentrate on this definition 01 box, blue box. First thing we divide, let's divide this uh, definition into the three distinct parts. First thing, there should be a driving force, means that there should be an internal kick which. Uh, which rush uh, by after receiving this force after receiving this kick someone will rush towards its goal and this driving force or this driving um, uh, kick will result because of something known as the goal what is goal which challenges our inner self which challenges our uh, cognition which challenges our inner mind okay so now let's redefine it. So motivation is a, a driving force which results, which produces a persistent behavior or a persistent uh, uh, running towards a goal. Now, this goal can be a result of the external stimulus or this goal can be a result of the internal stimulus. Let me explain this. Please clear this thing at the start. Otherwise, the next onward theories would be confusing. Okay, uh, what are the examples of the external goal? For example, a test. Uh, test on every uh, Tuesday and every Friday. This is an example of the external goal. The administration, the college have put a test. So all of you guys are studying, all of you guys are taking the slides, searching the internet, etc. So uh, motivation results as a because of this external goal. Now, some the external goal is not present in every situation. Sometimes this goal is a mere result of the internal motivation or the internal stimulus for example you are sitting quietly you have uh, a result you're waiting for your result then suddenly uh, a notification pop up and uh, you perceive it as that the result has been announced so you now start uh, searching the internet to you now start using your mobile there is a lot of uh, there is a storm of thing, thoughts in your mind, etc. So this goal can be internal or this goal can be external. In short, nutshell, motivation is a force which simply push us towards a goal or towards an external stimulus. Motivation is simply a force uh, which nature has put in our minds in order to solve, in order to deal with the various external environmental stimuli or we can redefine it. It's a need or desire that energizes our behavior, that fuel up our behavior. Without motivation, there is no behavior. Without motivation, there is no uh, energy in, in ourselves. Without motivation, uh, we are like, uh, we can't do anything. Even we can't eat, even we can't sleep. Hopefully it's clear. Now, there are certain features or there are the certain distinguishing points about the motivation, for example, we cannot observe it directly. We cannot observe the motivations of the people directly. We cannot observe why someone is forcing you that doctor, please pull my tooth out. We cannot observe that what is the motivation behind getting this orthodontic treatment that he wants to align his or her teeth. We cannot observe this. We, what, we, what we can observe is only the behavior, which is the derivation of this motivation thing. Okay. So always keep in mind, motivation cannot be observed directly. There are always assumptions regarding the motivations. For example, uh, for example, a doctor, a dentist in the future, he is doing the practice free of cost for and putting a label that I'm doing for to serve the humanity, to serve the poor people. Whereas in short, the underlying purpose is that he may be, he may be going to appear in, in some future elections. So he want to secure his so you cannot describe the visions of the people okay yes directly observe it in the form of behavior we can relate the events of behavior that by assumption regarding the motivation is a result of inference which is drawn by behavior of other people that how the other people responds towards us how the environment respond towards us as i said earlier that the motivation is simply nothing it's a way of responding our things towards the environment yes motivations contain the powerful tools by which we can explain the behavior of someone by which we can explain that why an individual is so motivated regarding this particular thing. But again, uh, let me explain one thing that the motivation is the most um, uh, 
uh, is the most misperceived thing about the behavior of someone you cannot certainly said that this individual is doing this thing so the reason most probably is this theek hai but you can relate it and uh, you can relate it in a relatively predictable way uh, please focus on this thing relatively predictable not the absolute we can make predictions about the future behavior yes by observing the current behavior by observing the current attitude of someone regarding an external stimulus you can presume that this individual future likely to act in this way why because i said that motivation is a result of is a way to uh, to uh, is a way of responding an individual towards an external stimulus now how the individual learned this way he learned this way in his or her brought up he learned this way of responding via the cultural values he learned this way via his own lifetime experiences you will learn in detail when you will when you guys will study about the about the personality thing what is personality how it's derived what's its relevance then you will guys know uh, know the importance that how our behavior is derived right but right now and just you have to learn two things motivation cannot be observed directly we have to assume it in the form of the behavior of other people and based on this behavior based on this perception we can easily relate it with the future behavior of a person like a patient of yours in future he is always skipping the appointments the most likely cause is he will skip the appointment in the future a student who used to fail an exam there is a likely chance that he or she will fail in future now Uh, let's make a distinction between the motivation and what are the motives so far it's clear or not please type in the comments motives are something okay motives are the basic framework of your motivation or bas- uh, basic uh, fabric of your uh, motivation thing if we can pinpoint it that how you will uh, i didn't see any comment yet you guys are there okay good good enough good enough okay okay so what are the motives motives are simply the building blocks of your motivation the thing uh, Uh, uh those core processes by which the motivation process itself build off okay so motives are the reason for doing something or in short motives are the goals motives are the unconscious tasks the reason why you are responding uh, in a particular way towards the stimulus motives yes as like motivations motives are the sub component of motivation so they also cannot be observed directly and as like the motivation motives are also an inference from the behaviors so in in future if the mcq came in in your exam that the motives are dash so motives are the sub components of your motivation or motives are the those building blocks from which your motivation drives so now define the uh, let's describe the types of this motivation thing motivation basically classified into two things one is the intrinsic one and other one is the extrinsic one let me recall the first slide as we said that motivation is a driving force because of this particular goal so if the goal is located in the external environment outside the mind of an individual then this type of motivation we will classify as extrinsic as the name depicts but if this particular goal is located inside the mind of an individual then we will divide this motivation as the intrinsic simple as that as the name depicts so based upon this goal thing based upon the stimulus thing there are two types of motivation one is a intrinsic one whose goals or whose stimulus these are located inside the mind of an individual and one type other type is the extrinsic motivation whose the goals whose the environmental stimulus these are located in the environment or outside the mind of that particular individual okay let's uh, uh, some uh, let's uh, discriminate the some qualities let discriminate some uh, some characteristics of this intrinsic as well as the extrinsic motivation intrinsic motivation it brings about the autonomy belongs to your belonging thing 
it's related something with the curiosity it is something which is related to your own learning your own mastery and your own knowledge so in a nutshell what is an intrinsic motivation intrinsic motivation is that which kicks inside from your brain simple as that what is intrinsic motivation intrinsic motivation is that uh, 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 there is a stimulus and the working force is drive inside your brain inside your mind more precisely how uh, let's say uh, there is a chapter of um, uh, let's say if i am giving you an assignment let's read a novel in this class so all of you will left the, all your businesses and you will involve in reading that particular novel you will involve in reading that particular book etc so intrinsic motivation is that which kicks us from the inside inside of our mind which kicks us inside our uh, uh, whose stimulus is located inside our mind for example uh, the book of your particular interest the hobby of your particular interest uh for example you are watching a season and uh, you you liked it so most probably you will watch it for the whole night whereas if i am giving you an assignment that uh, prepare the 10 page or the 10 slide assignment of pharmacology then most likely you guys will fed up in half an hour or in in 15 minutes so the reason being is that uh because the former activity that is watching a movie or watching a season it 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 is something which you likes from your heart okay so this is this type of motivation is known as the intrinsic motivation when the when the force is from originates inside that no nobody is compelling you nobody is uh, putting you that you should do this you should do this if someone from the environment or anything from the environment is pushing you towards a goal is pushing you towards a stimulus then this type of motivation would be known as the extrinsic motivation for example uh, you do do an activity for the sake of badges for the sake of stars for the sake of from the uh, from the fear of failure from the fear of punishment so all these examples are the examples of the extrinsic motivation so in future if you want to motivate your patients if you want to motivate yourself for the learning you have to bring the this sort of intrinsic motivation not the extrinsic one so how you will bring this intrinsic motivation we will describe it in your personality thing but in nutshell intrinsic motivation only cultivates if we if our internal and the external goals are matching let me explain in the later slides in the maslow's theory but if in future exam an mcq or seq come that which motivation is more powerful then it's always the intrinsic ones so this is an example of extrinsic motivation that this guy is doing exercise because of the fear of this trainer now how this motivation thing works how we can improve it there are theories obviously the basic theory is known as a drive reduction theory as a science is all about the logical knowledge science is all about the factual knowledge so the scientists the psychologists they 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 describe the some theories among them the famous is oh sorry purple knot this thing that is written in in the middle of screen the motivation the drive reduction theory let's divide it into the three words motivation is the result of drive that originates because of an external stimulus and as this drive reduces this thing motivation again reduces if this drive is not satisfied if this drive is not uh, uh, if we cannot fulfill it then this motivation cannot gone got it so motivation is the result of drive what is drive drive is simply a force which pushes us which uh, by, uh, which which pull us towards a goal theek hai so according to this theory motivation is all about the drive reduction meanwhile we we reduce drive by our behavior then felt otherwise the motivation is still there so let's focus on uh, from the left side is the screen there is a need there is a biological need like the food like the water like the sleep then our internal hemostasis is have gone into the disequilibrium there is always an equilibrium and the disequilibrium as you guys have studied in your physiological physiology classes right right 
um, like the like our the hunger process, like our the thirst process, etc. So, because of the disequilibrium in our now, I am reading the left side of the screen. So stay with me. The disequilibrium originates because of a disbalance in the basic physiological systems. For example, in the summer night, you are studying and suddenly you feel uh, thirst. Okay, so there is a disequilibrium because your uh, uh, the uh, the water balance in your body has disrupted or gone into the disequilibrium. Because of this disequilibrium, the need will emerge. Because of this need. there is a drive what is drive drive is that thing is that internal force which you are feeling inside your body or inside your mind for example you are standing in summers in a road uh, with the full sun shine so that anxiety which originates in your body this anxiety is known as a drive hopefully i explain i explain it because of need why need need originates because of the disequilibrium under the pressure of this need the physiological system will originate a drive in your mind that anxiety in your mind oh now imagine you are sitting on the chair you are reading a book you are reading the pharmacology book you are reading the dental materials book then suddenly in the summer hot night you uh, you got some thirst theek hai ab under this thirst that anxiety which originates now there is a need there is a urge to drink water that need that urge that anxiety that stress is known as the drive because of this drive there will be the induction of the drive reducing behaviors drive re reducing behaviors would be in case of thirst drinking in case of hunger eating in case of uh, in case of uh, uh, the mental exhaustion the sleeping etc because if this drive reducing behaviors are sufficient to achieve the hemostasis or to achieve the equilibrium or to cancel this disequilibrium then our body will again go into the equilibrium and this need or this motivation will end over here if this equilibrium is not achieved because of these drive reducing behaviors for example uh, you got up for drinking a glass of water and there is no water in your room then what will happen that this equilibrium still is in the disequilibrium state or this hemostasis is still in the is not in the your physiological system is not in the hemostatic hemostatic phase so what will happen that this need and this loop is keep on going right so to break this loop what we have to do the drive reduction behavior should be enough to bring back our equilibrium the physiological equilibrium i am talking about right so what this theory explains this theory explains that the motivation arises from the disequilibrium of our physiological system like uh, because our physiological system become disrupted uh, goes into the disequilibrium under the various environmental stimulus because of those environmental stimulus uh, their body will generate an urge body will generate a drive because of that drive there would be the result of the drive reduction behaviors and the drive reduction behavior will lead towards the again the equilibrium of this system so this theory explains that how the basic motivation works this theory is very good Uh, let's explain the basic physiological things basic physiological systems based upon this theory and let's see what are the shortcomings of this theory and what are the good points of this theory regarding the good points let me tell you one thing this theory is uh, fair enough in explaining the biological motivations let me tell you what are the biological motivations for example uh, biological motivations are those things which are rooted in our physiological state of body in short those motivations or those things which are necessary to keep keep us alive right uh, which are necessary to uh, to survive in this planet earth on this planet earth so biological motivation is something which is rooted in the physiological state of body for example hunger thirst sexual desire sleep temperature regulation pain void need for oxygen blah blah etc uh, body maintains hemostasis by this theory by this drive reduction theory so let's see these biological motivations one by one first among them is the sexual motivation uh, you have uh, read in detail about uh, uh, about the puberty about uh, the adulthood in your physiology physiology classes in the first year so the sexual motivation is basically the result of the our sex hormones that are necessary to uh, to reproduce it is necessary to uh, to uh, to survive on this planet so uh, these hormonal thing this body thing it is dried by our external stimulus 
uh, there is a way there is a genes encoded in our brain uh, we have learned in our developmental sequence how to fulfill this motivation so our desire came under the influence of hormones disequilibrium drive emerges then there are the drive reducing behaviors that is the sexual satisfaction and then the system goes on now another type of basic biological motivation is a social motivation humans are the social animals so this theory is very good as far as this biological motivation is concerned because let me revise this thing again it states that this equilibrium drive drive reducing behaviors then again the equilibrium or the hemispaces but let's apply this whole thing on this social motivation what is social motivation social motivation means the way we influence the other people who are living aside by in our society for example at your level are the colleagues are, are your class fellows are your teachers so there is a way you uh, you you got motivation you influence them you are influenced by them so let's apply this theory that can this theory is able to explain this social motivation things so let me define what is the social motivation concentrate on the box 01 uh, social motivation is a result of learned motives that involve the other people social motivation is something which is not rooted in your genes yes it is rooted in your genes that the human you should stay in a group of people you should make groups etc but how you are manipulating your colleagues how you are behaving towards your teacher how you are behaving towards your patients how you are behaving uh, towards the uh, the different stimulus this is not rooted in your genes you have learned during the course of your development you have learned during the course of your grooming in 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 this particular environment theek okay? hai uh, for example the need for the achievement need for the approval need to attain the power need to glorify etc and then a uh, social motivation among the social motivation there is a thing known as a power motivation and the machiavellianism let me explain this word what it is okay so now what happens according to that theory the disequilibrium must be in your physiological system now uh, uh, let's say there is a student who wants to become the cr of your class your colleague let's say somewhere now what he is doing he is he is running the campaigns of his competency he is running uh, the uh, he's he's trying to impress the whole class he is trying to utilize a different people so this motivation Uh, this disequilibrium is not in his physiological system yes uh, this motivation yes the, uh, the this thing his behavior is not rooted in the physiological system his physiological system is running well okay why am i uh, why am teaching you this let me tell you the difference between the biological motivation and the social motivation in the previous slide what we have learned under the need of the thirst under the need of the hunger your physiological system goes into the disequilibrium thing right this red box but under the need of this social motivation your biological system is running well right but now what happens what we see in the behavior that that particular guy or that particular individual he is so much motivated that he is running the campaigns he, he is ignoring his studies etc 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 so for that theory the drive reduction theory there must be a disequilibrium in the basic biological systems but when we are applying that theory on the social motivation or on the social needs or the social uh, social attractions of people Uh, there is no uh, there is no disequilibrium found in the physiological system so that was the basic question that there is something wrong with that theory right got my point so when applying that drive reduction theory on the social motivation it fails basically because it is well explained it is well experimented for the biological motivation theek okay? hai so that theory is again failed why there is a need to attain the power The, there is obviously everyone wants the limelight no yes it is everyone uh, everyone wants that when he or she enters the classroom that 
there must be the clapping there must be the that um, uh, there must be a feeling that a legend has come isn't it it is rooted in our genes it is rooted in the human behavior so uh, then there is another thing machiavellianism that the people are using the other people for their own purpose uh, so because of these differences that theory have got some issues that theory have got some criticism let me just tell you this thing that what is this machiavellianism machiavellianism basically is a product of narcissism and the psychopathy you will uh, read in detail what is this narcissism where it is produced etc etc in the letter on this section c but let me uh, tell you one thing about this narcissism is that the self love self love mean i am the perfect there is no one who can match me unconsciously if someone have this uh, this uh, if someone have this motive or someone have this thought that i uh, that the thing that i am doing no one can do in my way this behavior this particular personality type is known as the narcissist personality if this narcissism this self love is only present in an individual's personality we will label it as the narcissist personality but if along with this narcissism that particular individual tries to prove in the social settings that everyone should obey me everyone should learn it that no one is greater than me it means he is trying to do some psychopath things in his behavior then this combination of these two is known as the machiavellianism got it what is machiavellianism and the narcissism basic difference narcissism is only uh, is only limited towards the that particular individual right but if the psychopathology involves if the psychopath behavior is involved with this narcissism then we labeled it as a machiavellianism so our that drive reduction theory has failed to explain this machiavellianism this power factor this power politics etc these things so for that thing another theory came into existence known as a maslow's theory very famous one this maslow man is very famous in in the psych, in the psychology literature he basically inspired by the jesus the jesus uh, the basic question that came into maslow's mind is that why the jesus sacrifices his life for the whole uh, humanity or why the people are so generous that they even didn't care about their own life as according to another uh, famous psychologist known as the freud segment freud he said that Uh, we uh, we always run towards the life instinct or towards the life thing and our whole motivation our whole biology works our whole psychology works to avoid the death thing right so but here maslow observed that jesus sacrificed his life people sacrifice their own lives for the sake of other people so that question triggers in the maslow's mind that there is something there is something we should work with the Uh, with the motivation so for the sake of his theory for the sake of his research he started interviewing the the most successful people of that time like the presidents like uh, those people who did the great sacrifices etc he st- started studying those people then he formulated a hypo he presented a hypothesis that how these people are different from the rest of people how these people become so generous that they can sacrifice their own life so based upon these observations based upon these interviews he formulated his theory in the back in the 70s known as the maslow theory of needs so far good theory now according to him now concentrate on this slide he presented theory in a triangle form or in a pyramid form uh, the significance of this pyramid is that those things which have placed on the base of the pyramid or the base of the triangle they contain the more more weightage the weightage of the physiological need is always greater than the self actualization things mean that greater or lesser he defined according to the survival needs self actualization is not necessary for the survival but the physiological needs are necessity for the survival thing got it you can live without pursuing your talent without showing your creativity but you cannot live without the food without the water without the extremes of temperature right so the purpose of describing this theory in the triangular form is that the base or the base of the triangle got the more attention need um, have the more weight contain the more weight as compared to the tip of the triangle when it comes to the survival thing 
right so second purpose is that uh, this pyramid cannot be established this pyramid cannot withstand itself if the basic elements or the elements from the base of this pyramid lost for example you build a pyramid uh, by keeping the things on the tip just remove the base for example just uh, uh, took some legos took some blocks from your home build a pyramid and when the pyramid is completed remove the base what will happen the whole structure will fall itself right so in the same way this happens with the motivation thing if at any part of your life let's say an individual is at the steam need let's say suddenly his physiological needs become lost then what will happen he will again come at the physiological level got my point why he didn't present it his theory in a circular form why he didn't present it his theory uh, uh, by drawing the arrows he presented it in a triangular form because base got the more advantage in terms of survival and individual have to uh, have to climb individual have to rise in a ladder fashion with the base got the more weight than above than above than right now the third most important uh, presumption third most important point about this theory is that for the step above to be completed like for example if someone has to promote from the physiological need towards the safety needs then the physiological need should be fulfilled at any cost right until unless these physiological needs are not completed an individual cannot be promoted towards the safety needs if someone has to promote it from the safety needs towards the belonging needs then what will happen he has to fulfill first is the safety needs now let me tell you what are the these checkpoints when an individual can um, uh, can climb from one step towards the end the step hopefully this overview is good enough so far okay so according to this theory first motivation after the birth is our the physiological motivation an individual right after birth needs a food needs a water needs a warmth uh, these things if the physiological motivation is enough then we we'll think about our safety safety means both things one is the physical safety that is your shelter need that is your uh, security need that is your uh, other thing and other aspect of the safety is that the safety towards yourself the safety towards your physiological needs for example in simple words uh, this safety level to complete it there must be two checkpoints one is that the external safety is is there or not in the environment and the safety regarding the physiological things this food this water should be enough for my rest of life or not if this checkpoint is completed then i will promote towards the belonging then that individual needs a friends a family the community etc right so after the safety level there is another level known as the belonging belonging is that uh, an, an urge an internal desire of our mind to attach our self with some group in the community for example you belongs to the dentistry group the dentistry word is the most important word for the rest of your life because it represents you at the community level right so the profession our religion our caste system our ideology this all comes under this belonging thing right there is a need there is a basic need that we need this belonging we need to belong towards the group now what's the checkpoint of moving from belonging to the team need is that this belonging should be unconditional now focus on this word unconditional what is mean by unconditional people in the particular group which i am claimed which i claimed that i belong to this particular group they should accept me as it is whether i uh, uh, i am fair whether i am black either i am tall either i am short either i am chubby etc whatever i am who i am uh, whatever abilities i have my group should accept me as it is got it so after this belonging level then the maslow said that there is another urge in our 
mind which is known as the steam urge or the self steam urge it is simply defined as the uh, the something uh, should be in our mind a piece of our mind which is known as in simple words a piece of our mind what is mean by piece of our mind that i have did something in my lifetime i achieved this mastery after doing the bds now i have completed my post graduation this is the steam need right now after completed this post graduation i have further did this uh, speciality that speciality now the world known me as the doctor this theek hai i am the specialist in the veneer manufacturing i am an implantologist i i have i have i i uh, wrote around the 400 uh, research papers etc etc got it the recognition the need of the recognition now how this steam comes uh, i will not go into the detail because there is a much 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 detail which is beyond the scope of this undergrad uh, simple in simple words uh, steam need come fulfills when our internal desires match with the external environment for example you guys want to become an engineer your parents put into you this dentistry thing then you cannot achieve this steam thing for the whole of your life uh, for uh, right now this explanation is fair enough because um, if someone wants to know how this steam and how this belonging actually fulfills then go on the internet there is a lot of stuff available regarding the maslow's thing Uh, you will know about what is internal steam, what is external steam, what is the balance, etc., etc. Now let's move to the next level. Let's say if someone have now fulfills the physiological need, safety need, belonging need, a group from which he can claim that I belongs to this group, and on that particular group, on that particular belonging, he achieves or she achieves the steam thing. That is a recognition. Okay, now this group knows me who I am. Then. he or she will pursue towards the actualization what is self actualization the fullest potential of an individual the fullest creativity the the thing nature have created you guys with an inbuilt speciality so self actualization is another name of recognizing that speciality got it that who i am when you become selfless when you become totally indulged in that particular quality you polish that quality etc now let's assume in one minute that why not everyone like uh, at this particular level all of you have fulfill your physiological needs safety need belonging needs team needs more or less then why you guys are not self actualized so far huh this is a question the reason is that there are only uh, as i said to move from the physiological thing towards the safety thing there is a checkpoint there is a border known as that this physiological things should be showed for the rest of life which is impossible in reality right only those individuals who will who will do the sabar who will say that okay fine uh, if god created me then he ha- god has arranged the food the water the shelter for me for the rest of my life then only this thing can be fulfilled in the same way uh, there is no group which accepts ourselves as it is which i mentioned earlier the unconditioned positive regard or the unconditioned acceptance so if we accept ourselves with all our shortcomings then only this belonging need can be fulfilled in the same way this is team thing this is again not easy to complete because there is always a conflict between the external steam and the internal steam we want something but the society wants something else until unless you by your own self didn't resolve this conflict didn't accept your own self then you cannot fulfill this steam need now got the point why we are not claiming towards uh, this self actualization thing got it so now remember the first slide uh, that that charger slide let me show you again now interpret it after you have read that no one can motivate you until you motivate yourself until you accept yourself right okay so now see one by one in a little bit detail then the lecture would be over now the physiological needs now by looking on these two illustration let me tell you and uh, please tell me what these guys want obviously this little child she wants food ha huh? let put yourself into her position and can you study in this condition if god forbid you are living in this condition obviously not right you cannot we cannot uh, we cannot uh, I say anything about uh, uh, about the steam she didn't need a steam she didn't need a recognition 
she uh, she don't want that her name should be blink on every uh, billboard or every signboard she what she wants she wants a food when the food thing uh, will be completed then she will pro progress on that pyramid in the same way what this guys need also need a sleep the basic physiological need now what they want here is a shortcoming of the safety needs or the second step these guys don't want the recognition these guys don't want the uh, self actualization these guys don't want the uh, uh, this guy just want the security now what what he or she wants she wants the belonging a group to belong people who can who should accept this guy right uh, maybe he have enough food he maybe he have the enough shelter maybe he have the enough physiological resources to continue his life but psychologically this will suffer until unless he didn't join or some group did join this guy okay in the same way what she wants she wants a high esteem right now uh, obviously self actualization term first introduced by the this Maslow, genius. Uh, according to him, the self-actualizers are those people who make make the best use of their inherent potential, inherent capabilities, inherent things which nature have gave them, and they utilize their maximum potential. Well, what is the profile of this uh, self-actualizers? They have the. Uh, they are always autonomous. They always, uh, as I said, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, for someone to become self actualized to reach the self actualization level he must first accept himself then he must accept accept the rest of the world so the one who accept himself always obviously he or she will have the autonomy what is autonomy i can do my own decisions this is the first quality the most for most important quality then he should have the fellowship with the humanity doesn't it doesn't matter if someone belongs to me or not belongs to me i belongs to everyone got my point right then when he or she or someone accepts the humanity accepts the rest of people then what will happen the profound interpersonal relationships the the uh, relationships the excellent relationship with everyone right obviously when we have the good relationship with our colleagues good relationship with our working environment then obviously we have the non hostile sense of humor sense of humor is basically a reflection or the tongue slip which we are using in a homeric way uh, to express our thoughts to express our grief to express our negative emotions or positive emotions towards someone let's say someone who accepts himself who accepts rest of the people with all the negatives with all the shortcomings obviously he or she would have the non damaging sense of humor got my point and when accepting own self obviously is not easy when accepting the rest of people is not easy obviously everyone is not perfect right so there are basically two sides of a picture one is a black one is the white you should not solely focus on the black side or on the white side if you want to become a self actualizer then you have to see everyone in the gray side in the gray filter what is a gray filter i mean by gray filter i mean you should accept your colleagues you should accept your teachers you should accept your patients in future as it is as no one is purely bad no one is purely good everyone have a strengths everyone has its shortcomings right so when you will achieve this esteem thing when you will accept yourself when you will accept the rest of the people then obviously you will have the peak experiences now you relate how this th these things are related with each other first you have to improve the autonomous self take your decisions and start taking their credit or start taking their blame of your decisions yes i did this i am accepting this right accept yourself accept your other people based upon this gray picture right then there must be a obviously when you accept the people then there must be the non hostile sense of humor and by doing all this thing these things are not easy again this will got the peak experiences which help you to ascend the self actualizer level now obviously they have the efficient perception of reality they have the comfortable acceptance of self as without accepting the self we cannot claim the steps 
and uh, they have the spontaneity spontaneity is that they are not the dual nature people their their inner self and their outer self are working in a very coherent way or in a very uh, homogeneous way right then they are obviously task centering they are always focusing on the things which they need at the moment what are the pros of this theory obviously it provides a clear framework it provides the explanation of um, uh, of the social needs it provides the explanation of the human behavior beyond the biological needs but what are the drawbacks this theory is not universal why not universal because the uh, the need of the belongingness it obviously uh, in every culture you not cannot accept the people as it is uh, let me explain how uh, for example you are living in a hindu culture you cannot accept the people that are uh, not of your religious uh, domain got my point as hindus of the superior caste they are not accepting the people of the other caste so it is not this area is not universal people are bound by their social norms social uh, um, social things right social laws and the level of motivation can be deceived by the people as we said that uh, actually this problem is not uh, with this theory this problem is with the definition of the motivation as we said earlier in the start of lecture that the motivation is something which cannot be measured directly it is something which should be reflected in the uh, behavior of the people so let's say someone is stuck at the basic physiological needs and he is showing that he accepts all the people all the people should trust him and basically he is want to try to achieve the power he want to try to achieve the attention of the other people so in this way this theory can deceive us so these are the two drawbacks of this theory now so let's take the example of a hospital in the last two minutes and let's see how this theory applies to us or the how this theory applies to medical people or the dental people physiological needs are obstructed by as a patient admits in the hospital let's say someone with the squamous cell carcinoma and it obs uh, it, it involves a little portion of the tongue it involves a, a lower lip so doctor diagnosed him that um, and because of this uh, carcinoma he is unable to open his mouth now what happened that for the basic physiological things for the food for the water for the thirst he become totally dependent on the hospital staff so this first level is compromised how the safety is um, uh, uh, obstructed or how the safety is compromised as we have said that safety involves the two things one is the physical safety and other one is the safety of your basic physiological things now the patient become sick now the patient become ill so this safety thing become totally compromised there is no guarantee that will i recover or will i not recover right uh, if someone got let's say the caries there is a deep concern that maybe this will spread towards other teeth maybe i become the toothless how will i will it take now the third level is the belongingness level as the patient is away from the home as the patient uh, is labeled as the sick so now the people will see him as the sick people will keep a distance so this belonging thing become obscured and obviously when the belonging become uh, obstructed when the belonging become compromised then ultimately the steam thing automatically compromised now would you think that that person who uh, who who is perfectly healthy about one week back now he can claim that i am healthy he can claim that i am uh, i did enough i am the good at the right moment and ultimately the actualization need will be impacted or would be obscured now now what you can do basic physiological needs yes you can provide the food the doctor can provide the drugs the hospital can provide the bedding the comfortable setting safety is obviously the responsibility of the administration belongingness is the responsibility of the nursing staff uh, that they must empathize and the doctor that they must empathize the patient that you are not the alone you're not alone not alone at that moment uh, it, it's not merely your fault that you become ill or you become sick uh, this this thing happens to the humans other humans in the same way steam need can be provided if you will follow the bps approach what is the bps approach the biopsychosocial approach along with treating the disease along with correcting the biology you have to put focus on the uh, psychology and the social things what are the psychological and the social things for example the conversations for example uh, the uh, the literature things for example by providing the facts and figures which are described in the literature by by uh, by 
not assuming your patient as the ill person or the ill object by assuming that he's also a normal human being right and ultimately a self actualization thing can only be provided if in the future we can make him healthy now that's it so if you guys have any questions then please write in the comment box so that i can answer him right or is everything clear so strange <laughs> Uh, right after this please go to that uh, moodle learning management system and uh, there are the videos posted and see it uh, pros are that uh, of this maslow theory maslow theory pros is that uh, it also explains the social behaviors of the people like if someone is seeking the power if someone is trying to dominate in a particular people of group then we can say that the belonging needs are compromised or he or she is trying to achieve the belonging needs if someone is if your patient is all if you are let's say uh, in the future you are starting your dental practice and you are hiring the staff and the among the people the one person who is good in work but is always concerned about the salary thing then it means that that person is still stuck at the basic physiological things what it let's say if in a group of people you have as um, in the dentistry you guys have to complete the quota you guys have to complete the group work group assignments in the future so if someone among your group is trying to uh, is trying to utilize other people for the sake of him if someone is too much selfish then you can relate his behavior with that triangle so these are the pros uh, while previously we are just having the derived reduction theory by using the derived reduction theory we cannot accurately describe that why this individual is behaving in this way whereas the all the physiological needs of his or her are completed got it so this theory gave us an insight about the social behavior about the overall behavior of a person why the particular person is is doing this thing or is showing this sort of behavior Okay so any questions